Hello, welcome everyone. Uh, feel free to say hi uh, if you're here. Um, and I've got the chat open, so hopefully I can see your messages. Hi, welcome. Great to hear from people already. Hope we're all having a good weekend and everyone's keeping well. And welcome to obviously this session. We're looking at cumulative frequency and box plots. So this will be a session that will be quite useful for the statistics side of the math sale of the course. So this is the bit that um, makes up the applied part of your maths A-level component. And it's a topic that some of you may have seen at GCSE and might be quite confident with. I wanna just kind of go through A-level exam style questions and just build up the ideas for everyone today. So welcome, great to see so many people joining. I hope you're all doing well. Not too long now until half term. Uh, hi, welcome, great. Thanks for the messages in the chat. I can see those coming through. Um, hope you're all doing well and your weekend's going nicely. Hopefully things feeling quite positive, um, certainly for the next couple of weeks and this run up to half term. Um, another sort of strange year, but it's gone by quite quickly. Welcome to everyone and do say hi if you haven't already. I'm gonna share my screen shortly and uh, we're gonna start looking at this part of the statistics side of the course. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna share my screen so you can all hopefully see what we'll be working on today. Uh, but welcome to everyone. And as I said, I hope we're all doing well and everyone's keeping well. Um, right, so hopefully that is shared with you and you can see that all full screen now. So we're gonna be looking at cumulative frequency and box plots today. Um, good, can everyone see that all right? Let me just check. Cool. Right, so, this web class today will be on this topic, but I will talk about Snap Revise and the web classes we offer and also a kind of promotional discount code we've got to let some of you have a trial if you've enjoyed this session and um, look at the other resources we offer that might be helpful in supporting you with your A-levels. So I'll be doing that um, as we go. We're going to look at this topic today, which is part of the applied side of the A-level maths course. And uh, I'm going to get started now. It'd be great to hear as we go comments, answers, questions to the content we go through. Um, and I'll be happy to kind of go through and help you out with that throughout the session. So here we go. Let's have a little look. Um, so that's me. I'm Max. I'm head of maths at Snap Revise. And I did my maths degree a few years ago now. I've been teaching A-level maths and GCSE for the last uh, four years or so. And it's been a really interesting time to teach these exam groups and see the changes because there were some big changes that took place in about 2017 and the GCSEs and A-levels were changed in quite a big way. And obviously it's been a very interesting couple of years in terms of assessment um, and the changes to exams more recently. Uh, but the kind of classes we offer and the resources we've got are bang up to date with all the syllabus and criteria required for the GCSEs and A-levels at the time um, that you're studying them right now, so as it's all changed. Um, so it's been quite a nice time to look at the changes in exams and the content uh, that's now included in the A-level. Uh, welcome if you're just joining, please do say hi in the chat if you haven't already. Uh, here is a code you can enter at the checkout in uh, on Snap Revise website, which I'll show you later. Uh, two to seven, and that will expire in about 24 hours. I'll talk about what we're going to cover in a second. I won't specifically go over histograms because that's very much um, a topic that in itself uh, has lots of different parts, but I'll talk about how you can access other web classes where we've gone through that content before um, and also again in future as well. Um, so the discount code is tutor seven, uh, which can be used on the Snap Revise website, which I'll navigate to towards the end of this session, uh, where we've got kind of backlog of web, web classes that we've done previously as well. If you've missed a topic or there's something that would be particularly useful on there. So I'll talk about that towards the end. Um, but yeah, please do ask any questions as we go. What we're gonna look at today is cumulative frequency and handling group data. So there's a lot kind of more in-depth questioning of this in the A-level exam, even if you've seen it before in GCSE. We're going to look at how we use cumulative frequency graphs to estimate things like percentiles of group data and also box plots. 
Um, so we're going to look at how they relate as well. I'm not going to be looking at outliers and um, interpolation and histograms directly, although this process of linear interpolation is effectively covered within cumulative frequency a lot of the time. And we're going to talk about why things are an estimate and so on. So that's what we're going to look at today. But please do ask and answer questions as we go. Uh, just as a quick recap, so obviously there will be some things you're fully aware of from GCSE. Uh, if we've got a list of, for example, nine discrete values here, so n is nine, and I asked you to find, um, for example, the median or the quartiles, um, what's quite nice about this is that when it's an odd number, it's often easier to deal with. So who can tell me what the median would be of this data? So the median is obviously if you chop the data in half and it's already in ascending order, what would be the middle value effectively? Um, so brilliant. Right. Well done. So people get sometimes all confused about a kind of formulaic way of doing this. But for discrete values, we can actually chop the data up into kind of nice chunks here um, in terms of the first, second, third, fourth, um, fifth value, etc. So what we've got is if we divide it up, um, split it, sort of split the, each part into it like in half and then into quarters some people learn the formula for it as m plus one over two um, if you add one to the number of things in the list and half it that works out quite nice so nine plus one divided by two is the fifth item um, which equals a seven okay and then you'd have the same amount of data points on either side brilliant um, the first quartile so i'd do the same thing i'd do m plus one divided by four um, here and see what we get. And this would be the sort of 2.5 value, which would be in between here and here. Okay, so between three and six, the way we would work towards finding that is we'd basically average them out. So it's the average of three and six, which I would do as like the mean of three and six, add them up and divide them by two, half of nine, so 4.5. So it's the value that would fall between 3 and 6 of 4.5. Very good. So what we're saying is the middle is quite clearly the fifth thing because there's four on each side. But the lower quartile, or the first quartile, would be halfway between the second and third thing, so the 2.5 thing. Now, if they were both the same number, that's easy. But because they're different, we sort of have to average them. So I kind of take like the mean of two things. So in a similar way, I can do kind of three quarters of the list over four, which would be like the 7.5 term in the list or in the sequence, the 7.5 thing, um, which would be between here and here. So the middle of nine and 11. So add them up, divide by two, and we're going to get the upper quartile. Excellent. Thanks for the answer there, Lydia. That's lovely. 10. So that's how you deal with a kind of discrete list. Um, now, percentiles are very similar to kind of quartiles. You could have quartiles, deciles, percentiles. Obviously, this time, it's not out of four, it's out of 100. So it's the position you want out of 100 would be the sort of nth percentile. Okay, so what we've got going on here is if I wanted the 10th percentile, of this data, that would be the first term, which would be like effectively 10% of the way through. Um, so you can work out percentiles as well, generally more useful for bigger amounts of data to use things like percentiles. Um, and then another quick recap of box and whisker plots or box plots, you might have called this before, just very quickly. So for this data here, the lowest value is one. The first quartile was 4.5 the median was seven um the upper quartile we had was 10 and the biggest value in the data was 15. so what we use is we kind of use the minimum value the maximum value and if you could just give me a quick yes or no if you're familiar with this and everyone's kind of comfortable um with this sort of idea That'd be great. Just let me know in the chat if you've seen this sort of stuff before. 
Cool. So what we're going to do today, that should be very much kind of a recap, excellent, is we're going to look at um, obviously cumulative frequency and box plots in light of the A-level exams. So this can come up in terms of the statistics side of the course. Um, and this is a really key idea that comes up on all the exam boards. Uh, we need to be familiar with dealing with data that's presented in this way. So what we've got is cumulative frequency graphs we're going to start with. Um, and we're going to start with the group data given in a table. And this at GCSE, I think, is something that um, people don't like. They're like using the inequalities to set up the groups. Uh, but we've got to get kind of familiar with that and confident with that notation. So the cumulative frequency um, for a set of group data is basically a running total. A running total. So I'm just going to kind of give a quick definition of the idea. Total of the frequency of the frequency up to and including uh, that set or interval, okay? So what we've got here, if we could do this, if you wanna share the answers in the chat, um, with me for each one, that'd be great. Uh, cumulative frequency, if you've worked them out quite quickly, but it's basically a running total of the frequencies. And thank you to those that have already um, done that. So the first one is just gonna be the 25. The next one's gonna be the 25 plus the 30. Um, so that's gonna be a total of 55. And then we're gonna take the 55 up to there and add another 40 on, 95, etc. And the 95 plus the 45, 140. Um, and then we're going to keep going. Um, and then 140, then 180. Let's check we agree. And then 200, nice round number, is out of 200. So zero to eight, whatever this is a measure of, this X variable, 200 have uh, people say have between zero and eight. Brilliant. Thank you. Excellent, guys. Right, that's lovely. So now using that, we're going to use that to actually create the cumulative frequency graph. And it might be that in the exam, they just give you the graph and ask you to do some interpretation from it. And kind of key thing we should remember, um, hopefully from GCSE, is so the cumulative frequency graph plots the upper bound, the upper bound of each set. Um, against the cumulative frequency of that set. Okay, brilliant. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to quickly plot this for you. Now, you might remember from GCSE, you use the end of the boundary. That's what I'm basically saying, not the midpoints. That's more for like things like a frequency polygon. Because this is a running total, we're kind of using up to and including the endpoints. So from zero to one, it's reached up to 25, two, three, four, five. So that's there. Okay. Then at by the end of this group two, it's up at 55. So that's kind of up here. Then by the end of this group, 2.5. Now remember this is 2.5. So this is just one box along because that would be three, five, seven. So do be careful with the scale if you're plotting it. 2.5 is up at 95. And some of you might recognize the general shape that this should have. So I plot this on nice and carefully first, 2.5 to three, it's up at 140. Then at five, it's up at 180. Oh, that's not there. And then at six, it's all the, oh, sorry, at eight, it's all the way up at 200. Okay, now you might recognize that this generally has a sort of S shape curve to it. Now that was quite, I've tried to do that freehand, um, 
but is that general sort of shape? Have we seen that before? Is that something we recognize? So it's often the sort of weird sort of slanted S shape because it runs to a running total. So by eight, everyone, all 200, oops, sorry, have up to and including eight as their score or whatever this is. Um, and then just to give you another example, um, if we were to take, for example, how many people, uh, what, what number of people got less than 3.5, less than or equal to 3.5, the way we would go about that is use our sketch and go along and say 160 or whatever it is, approximately 155, 160, depending on how the sketch looks. Um, and that's what we're going to look at uh, today with these questions, as well as some more exam style questions for this topic. So if you could give me a quick one, two or three indication of how confident you are with just the general idea of cumulative frequency graphs and how they work. And then what we're going to do is look at an exam question now and see exactly how this comes up. Um, so do we need to correct? Um, right, really good question there, actually. So the thing with the bounds that throws people off with statistics is it depends how it's how it's given to you. Brilliant. Thanks, guys. Thanks for the indication on how you found that. So the thing with the with the bounds. So, for example, here, this is nice. This is kind of the ideal way, way to sort of express it. Um, and just to check everyone's clear on how the bounds work. If I had 3.1, sorry, 3.4 as the temperature, are we happy that that would go in this group and not this group? So 3.4, because of the, sh the strictness of the inequality, that is all equal to, so it falls in here. So they don't overlap. Everything is well-defined. Um, we just need to be clear on how the notation works for what group it's in. There are some questions people often have with interpolation uh, about the bounds when they give it with a hyphen and you have to explain extend it to the 0.5s. But typically for this topic, it's laid out quite nicely like this. So we'll, I, I see what you mean, but we'll see as we go that generally it's kind of given in this way. But you have got to be careful with bounds, absolutely, especially more so for the interpolation. Right, here they've given us the cumulative frequency curve. The temperature of a supermarket fridge is regularly checked to ensure that it's working correctly. Over a period of three months, the temperature measured in degrees Celsius is checked 600 times. These temperatures are displayed in the cumulative frequency diagram below. So what we're going to do here is we are going to use the diagram to kind of work out what should go in. So at 3.4, and we've got to be careful here, um, that one hopefully uh, we'll agree is 25. But what we've got to be careful with, it's not like a kind of bar chart or something where you just read off the total and that's it. We know that this is a running total. So for example, at 3.8, the next boundary is plotted up here. Um, that's up at 100 and, oops, sorry. That's up at 150, okay? But I'm not gonna put 150 in here. What am I gonna put? So up to and including 3.8, is 150. So what should go in this bit, which is exclusively from 3.4 to 3.8, basically how much has it, has it gone up by is what we care about. Because we know we already had 25 for the first bit. Superb, thank you for that answer, uh, those sharing in the chat. We're gonna have to do 150 minus the 25 we'd already accounted for. So it's gonna be 125 that goes in there. Cool. Now the next one, uh, brilliant. So 4.6 to 5.0. So at five, it's at 600. And at 4.6, it's all the way up, as it says in there, 150, uh, 157 have been added. So what I'm going to do is if I add all of this up, or alternatively, I look at my total up to 4.6, because that would help, uh, which sorry, 4.6 up here, 550. If I take away the difference of 600 and 550, what's left for that final group? So in there, in that final little interval, we're gonna have 50 represented. And now all of these totals should add up to 600. Okay, cool, right, we'll do another 
um, exam question now, but hopefully that's all nice and clear. So that's one sort of style question they could get you to do to really check you understand cumulative uh, frequency and how you can then put that back into the separate intervals. So it's a good one to sort of look at. Here's another example of a question. The heating quality of the coal in a sample of 50 sacks is measured in suitable units. The data are summarized below. Draw a cumulative frequency um, diagram to illustrate these data. So let's pick a, a suitable scale. I'm gonna maybe start from nine, then go 9.2, 9.4, 9.6, 9.7, 9.8, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 
and I would read that off there um, as five, for example. So the 90th percentile would be five. So that would be the 90th percentile because it's like 90% of the whole amount of data, which was 200 points. Does that kind of make sense? So that would be five. Obviously the median and the quartiles. So out of 200, the first quartile would be at 50. And you'd read that off, whatever that is. So let's say that's approximately 1.8. Halfway would be the median. And you'd read that off. So that would be like 2.6 approximately. And the third quartile, um, if we measured along here, oops, that was terrible, um, and down. So three quarters of the way through the data would be like two, uh, 2.8. So we're using this to estimate these values. Why is it an estimate is what we should sort of be thinking. And that could be asked in the exam as well. The point I do just want to stress about here is the whole n, n plus one thing. When we've got grouped continuous data, we can kind of cut it up a lot more nicely than how we deal with discrete, where we do the n plus one idea, because it's almost like it's continuous, almost like cutting a cake into different chunks. Want the 90th percentile, because it's all grouped and I'm dealing with it in this continuous way, I can just go, well, that's like 180 out of the 200 of the way through it. So it's actually in a way, arguably nicer to break it down into different percentage points of the way through when you're dealing with continuous data. Yeah, so the reason that this is an estimate is you don't have the raw values. Like I don't know what actually any of the individual values are. I just know the general shape of the data and how many people got up to and including this value. So I'm. this is effectively interpolating. This is using what we know to get an estimate and assuming that everything's spread within those groups the same. So yeah, really good point there, lovely. So what we'll do is, um, Looking at this, for example, a box plot of group data can be drawn using um, the estimated quartiles. So you can be asked to use what you've just done from the cumulative frequency to then go on and draw a box plot, sometimes on the same graph or just below it. The estimated quartiles, um, and this is quite common as well at A level, quartiles from the cumulative frequency graph. So it's one of these topics, I think, that we can be quite confident with, but maybe not do as much exam practice of just out of focusing on other stuff. Um, and, and it is actually really important that we don't drop marks and we're fully aware of all the ideas that could come up with this content as well. So what you can do is like directly below it, we go, OK, the lowest value is there. Um, go along to there. and then putting in these values accordingly. And then there we go, and then the highest value, yeah. So you could draw the box plot from what we've got from the cumulative frequency. So the maximum minimum values um, on the box plot are basically the start and end values Start and end values um, of the graph. Okay, cool. Right, I'm going to keep going. So if you can give me a quick indication on this stuff, uh, how you're feeling with that, then we'll do a few more exam questions. Um, some good ones actually to work through carefully uh, together. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit about Snap Revise and some of the other classes we've got coming up and stuff. So. Um, hopefully this is sort of fairly familiar content. I know that there are aspects of even the statistics that go a little bit more in depth or we're not sure of. But the reason this is a good thing to look through is they do ask often comment questions on why is it an estimate? What, what have you assumed and so on? And there can be some quite picky marks um, in these exam questions as well. And you want to be making sure that something like this we 100% get correct and we know what we're expected to do. Brilliant. So just give me an idea of how confident you're feeling um, if you haven't already. And thank you to those that have. That's lovely. I'm going to just move this on uh, and we're going to look at this uh, question now. So the examination marks obtained 
by 1,200 candidates are illustrated on the cumulative frequency graph, where the data points are joined by a smooth curve. Use the curve to estimate, okay? Now, it is an estimate just because we're using a curve that represents the cumulative frequency. It doesn't mean don't do it precisely. Um, and we want to estimate the interquartile range, the IQR, and X if 40% of the candidates scored more than X. So that feels maybe a little bit trickier. So the interquartile range is basically the range between the lower quartile and the upper quartile. So I'm going to look at that now. Remember, this is the total frequency. So we don't divide 100 by 2 and by 4 and go, oh, 25, 50, and 75. We use the running total. It's out of 1,200 people, 1,200 candidates. So the median is the 600th because we're dealing with it in this sort of grouped continuous way. Okay, so we can kind of work that down like that. And then the upper quartile will be the 900th value, three quarters of the way through the data. So we read this value off. So we go down here, read off the upper quartile, um, which we can see here. Um, and that looks like that is gone through that eight. Yeah, about 70. And then if I go for the 300th the lower quartile, which looks like it's about 45. Okay, so upper quartile, or the third quartile, I'm going to say approximately uh, 70. Lower quartile, approximately uh, 45. And so the interquartile range is the difference between the two. Um, oops. Sorry. Can everyone still see that okay? Is that all still sharing okay? Um, it's going to be 25. Yep, yeah, lovely. And then Cool, super. And then the other one, we've got to be careful here. This is a really good exam question to look at. Um, X, if 40% of the candidates scored more than X. So what this is really asking is for the 60th percentile. And please ask me if, if you're unsure about that. But if this is saying that 40% of the candidates scored more, and those of you that have gone beyond and done things like hypothesis testing and binomial continuous distributions, you might have seen this upper tail idea. If it wants the top 40% or the upper 40%, then it's basically like the bit above the bottom 60 in effect. So we're looking up to where the 60th percentile is. So the 60th percentile, um, if we do 60 out of 100, um, the total amount, then we get 720th value. Okay, so what we do is we go to 720. Go along, read it down. Okay, and the value we get there is about 63. So 63 is the value that basically 60% of people got less than, and so therefore 40% of the people got more than. Um, so that's a kind of strange way of wording it. But if we don't let that phase us and we think it's still percentiles and quartiles and that sort of topic, we can work out, well, how could I reword this so it makes a bit more sense? Good. Right. So let me just carry on. We'll do another um, exam question following this one now. So use the curve to estimate the number of candidates who scored more than 68 marks. So this is now the reverse way around. Oh, good question. If it said less than. Yes, brilliant. Absolutely right. So if it said less than, it's kind of been designed the correct way round for the graph because that is up to and including. So less than or equal to. But if it says more than, you've got to kind of reverse engineer it in your head. That was a brilliant question there. Yeah, so they could often do that. They could do one where it's less, one where it's more. And you've just got to be very careful that you interpret it the correct way. Brilliant question. Right, so the number of candidates who scored more than 68 marks. Now this is 
using it the other way around. So there's 70. So I'm going to use 68, work up to my line. And again, we've got to be very careful that we interpret this the correct way round. And actually for this kind of question, drawing the lines on, obviously like a pencil and a ruler would be best, or a pen and a ruler, but just use a ruler. That's your method marks effectively, potentially. So you've got to be really kind of clear with this. Now, this says the number of students who scored more than 68 marks. Well, we know that the number of students who scored less than or equal to that or up to any, that value is at 860. So what I can do is I got 860 scored less, scored less, that's the boundary, than 68. So what I need to do here is I need to do 1,200 minus 860. No worries, brilliant question. So that'd be 340, um, would, we would say scored more. OK, now, again, it is still just an estimate. Because within that group that we've done the curve for, we don't know how it's spread within that group. We've just kind of assumed it follows this line. It follows this sort of curve that it's all perfectly distributed in that way. Um, but obviously, it could all be spread out kind of strangely within those groups. So it is subsequently discovered that the candidates' marks in the range 35 to 55 were evenly, distribu evenly distributed. That is roughly equal numbers scored each bit. So what does this information suggest um, about the value uh, of the estimated interquartile range found in part one? So what do we reckon here? Oh, excellent. That's great to hear. Lovely. Um, brilliant. Now, there are some tricky questions, a little bit like this one. So I'm going to go through this um, kind of carefully. So it's subsequently discovered that the candidates marks in the range 35 um, from here to 55 were evenly distributed. Now, I'm going to show you what, what's happening here, because uh, this is a bit of a weird additional question. Now, if they were evenly distributed, this is a kind of interesting question to look at. That means it's perfectly spread in a dead straight line. Like if you've got your ruler, it's spread out in a linear fashion. Does that make sense that that's what that's saying? So this is a really good exam question to sort of tease out um, because we want to make sure we get this right. So if, if it says that they were subsequently discovered, it was perfectly evenly distributed, not this sort of curve shape with fit to the overall data picture. Within that interval, it was a dead straight line. So what that means is the estimate to the interquartile range we found earlier, um, what it means is that first quartile, that 300, would have actually been a bigger number than what we, what we found, what we should have found. So that would mean that the interquartile range was probably smaller. Okay, so I'll, I'll re-explain that. Um, but it, what it would mean is that the first quartile or the lower quartile we calculated was basically an overestimate so it was greater than the true value so take a minute to, to uh, make sense of this is a really good question to go through greater than that of the true value and please do ask me if you still need this clarified um, but I'm just going to explain how to fully get the marks here. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'll write this out and then I'll re-explain it. No problem. So then the interquartile range, uh, we calculated. is probably smaller than the true value. So basically what this is saying in the question is that if it's saying this bit was really evenly distributed from 35 to 55, then that bit is a straight line because it's evenly distributed, it goes up 
evenly. It's not got a curved shape to how it's spread. So hopefully that makes sense. And, and hopefully that's kind of clear. Um, so what we've then got is that the first quarter, when we earlier, on the earlier part of the question, we used this curve to work out the lower quartile and upper quartile and then worked out the interquartile range. What, we're, what this is now telling us is that curve isn't really accurate for that part of the overall picture. And it should look more like this. So if you took a ruler and a pencil and drew it point to point going up, it goes up in that sort of straight linear way. And then what we can do is if we were to then go across from 300, we'd hit that line sooner than where we would hit the actual curve. So that means that the value for the lower quartile would be smaller than what we would have got from the curve. And so it basically tells us that the curve gave us an inflated value for the lower quartile. It made it bigger than it should have been. Um, and so what we found is that the interquartile range should be bigger because the lower quartile should have been further back. Does that kind of make sense to everyone there? No, no. So this, this is kind of a kind of quirky addition to the question. This is something they could throw in and we need to kind of go, well, what can I do with that information? And basically what we're doing with it is we're saying it changes the shape of the graph in that bit. So if they ever say evenly distributed, sort of uniformly distributed within this interval, it would mean it's going up very regularly. And so it's basically following a straight line. The gradient is a constant. It's a constant rate of change, uh, which is what a gradient is. So from that point to that point should be straight. It shouldn't be a curve, meaning that if I drew that in and I look at what the data would have looked like in terms of the cumulative frequency, it would have grown in this linear, straight, steep gradient fashion from point to point there. So if I then read off the actual um, lower quartile from that, I would have hit it before I hit the curve, meaning the value would have been further back. And so the value I found was too big really for the lower quartile and the interquartile range would have been spread out a bit more. Um, and that's what this question is asking us to interpret so it is quite tricky like i think these these are the kind of good ones to go through because it is a little bit more challenging than your bog standard go through read off and interpret it that way um but worth sort of talking through and please do ask if you still have questions on that um i think this is the kind of thing that will cost people marks or maybe too much time people spend too long on this sort of question okay so that was really good um and thank you to the comments and questions there about that. Right, I'm gonna keep going. Uh, we've got a couple more exam questions to do, and then I'll talk about Snap Revise and some of the other web classes we've got. So here we go. The birth weights of 200 lambs from crossbred sheep are illustrated by the cumulative frequency diagram below. Estimate the percentage of lambs with birth weight over six kilograms. So it's another one of these. Remember that this is designed to tell us how many are less than six or less than a certain value. So if I go from six upwards to this value here and I read it across, it's coming out as 160. So there's 160 less. So how many are there more? No worries. That's lovely. Well done, everyone. That's really good. So um, lambs that are below, lambs below, um, is approximately, let's say, 160. So above, what have we got? And this is very like a question we spoke about earlier. It's going to be the 200, the total frequency, minus the 160 below that value. So approximately 40. 40 lambs would then have a birth weight over that amount. Is that clear to everyone? Does that kind of make sense? Um, and it didn't say how many, let's look out for this. It's an easy thing to miss. We've done all the hard work. It said estimate the percentage. So if it's percentage and there's 40 out of 200, so 40 out of 200 times by 100 to turn it into percentage, uh, percentage that will be 20%. So 20% of the lambs have, like about a fifth of the lambs have a birth weight above that value. Right, then the next bit says estimate the median and interquartile range of these data. So let's do that now as well. So the median will be, we'll go along from 100. Remember, not from the 10. There's 200 things. We're looking at the 100th one. Go along and we're going to go 5.2. Just be careful with the scale there. So the median is approximately 5.2. 
and give the um, give the units as well. Right, and then the interquartile range, um, and really this should be quite a, a you know a fairly sort of nice extension on GCSE, a fairly good recap topic, um, but obviously it does cost people marks. So the interquartile range, you're going to go 150 and 50 and move along. Um, and then what I'll do is, as I said in a minute, after we've done these exam style questions, I'll show you the kind of content we've got um, and web classes we've got coming up uh, as well. So 4.2 is the lower quartile and 5.8 is the upper quartile. Take them away from each other. 5.8 minus 4.2. And that'll be 1.6 kilograms. And remember your units. Lovely. Um, right, last one of these. Um, and let's give this a go. So the box and whisker plot shows um, the birth of 100 lambs from the Welsh mountain sheep. Use appropriate measures to compare briefly the central tendencies and variations of the weights of the two types of lamb. So like we've seen before with comparisons, we need to do a measure of spread, even if they don't say like this one kind of guides you to it, um, a measure of spread and a measure of central tendency, like the median. So for the, the earlier ones, I'll just write out what we had. Spread, so median, IQR, I'll just remind you from a minute ago. Uh, and then I'll look at kind of the other, uh, I'll show you the other resources we've got available and some of the web classes we've got coming up. As I said, there is a discount code we're giving for a week um, free trial for Snap Revise. And we've got a lot of web classes for the A-level coming up this week. Uh, and I'll show you the kind of topics we've got going on there. Um, brilliant, right, 8.8 .8 and two kilograms was the minimum there, cool. Right, and then if we're going to compare this now, so here we can read off that the lower quartile is 3.1, 3.6, and then this one would be 3.9. Use appropriate measures to compare. Um, well, I would say the Welsh mountain sheep, and this is, as I said, the last exam question, um, and then I'll be happy to answer any other questions you guys have, um, and so on and also show you what we've got to offer on Snap Revise. So the Welsh mountain sheep um, have a smaller median, have a smaller median. And I know some of you have seen this sort of idea at GCSE before, and you're good at these comparisons, um, but I'm just gonna talk about how important it is that we do both. So the Welsh mountain sheep have a smaller median than the crossbred sheep. Um, the cross, Bread, sheep, oh, apologies, pen's gone a bit weird there. Um, so are lighter on average. That's what that's sort of saying. They are lighter on average. And a bit of interpreting there is, is key as well. Okay, and then the other thing we would also say is they are they also have a smaller range. So you could use the range or the interquartile range. That's a measure of spread. They also have a smaller, a smaller range. And let's think about what that means. And interquartile range, actually. So the, the weights are less sort of spread out. They're more consistent in their weights of weights. So it's kind of like if you were comparing, say, your class at school and another class and how fast they run a race or how good they got on your in a test. Um, it's very easy to make uh, to basically think, oh, what I'll do is I'll just say um, the fastest person was the fastest in our class or the, the best score came from our class or the average was higher. And a lot of people do think we'll just compare this average with this average. But the spread is also equally important because it might be that actually all the results were more tightly packed together and more consistent in one group. And that's a very different thing. Right, very good. So what I'm gonna do now is obviously just uh, as a recap, what we've done is we've looked at cumulative frequency and handling group data. We've looked at exam questions and a bit of box plots as well. Um, if you've got any questions, please do keep them coming in the chat. Um, 
upcoming web classes. So obviously there's web classes for all the subjects. Please do set a reminder if you've enjoyed this and you found this useful. Um, in terms of the maths tutoring we offer on Snap Revised, there's four or sometimes more classes per week, year 12 and 13 content, as well as drop-ins to help you with homework, assessments you've got coming up. Um, and then some really lovely resources that are perfectly tailored towards the new A-level. Um, so this is the code. I'm just going to share with you the website now so you can see uh, how to go about this. So if I just stop sharing that um, and I'm going to share the uh, Snap Revise website. So if you find make your way over to this website, you navigate to the Snap Revise site and you go on tutoring. Uh, what we've got on there. So, for example, I'm going to go on to A-level maths. We've got um, loads of resources, and obviously this package comes with access to all those resources, um, some really nice notes, um, really exam material broken down and lots of additional practice materials, uh, web classes and drop-ins every week, uh, and a backlog of classes we've done. So if I know some of you are asking today about other topics, um, we, we work through the kind of academic year doing year 12 and 13, topics comprehensively and we kind of cover them all um, in really careful depth looking at exam questions um, with some really good notes in those sessions and you can access all the ones that have been done previously. Uh, we also have drop-ins uh, a couple of times a week where students can send their own questions in, ask me to go through a specific topic um, and hopefully help you in a really tailored and targeted way and what we've got um, is obviously sessions coming up so for example tomorrow there's a year 12 class and a drop-in Wednesday there's a year 13 class and a drop-in um, and that covers not just the pure content but also the mechanics and the statistics so if you found this useful um, please do sign up for that and do the free trial and see how you get on uh, it'd be lovely to have you join those sessions and hopefully be useful in preparing for what you're facing at school and what you've got coming up as well. So that is um, what we've got, the Tutor 7 code, for those of you that are interested. Um, that'd be great to see you there at those sessions. Thank you to all of you for working through that so well today. And although that topic was hopefully kind of a nice extension of what you've effectively seen before at GCSE, uh, it was really good to go through it in light of how it will be examined in the A-levels. So really well done. Uh, Thanks very much for those of you taking part today in that session and hopefully see you at a session in future. But it'd be really great if you're interested in signing up. Uh, I might see you at a session this week. Uh, well done. Take care, keep well and have a good rest of the weekend. Um, and yeah, hopefully see you at a session soon. Thanks, guys. Well done. Bye.